Thank you, Jake. Uh, sorry about this. Uh, I'm going to present a scheme which uh, combines the method of holonomic computation with quantum error correction. And this is the work I've done in collaboration with uh, Todd Brown, Daniel Lidar, and Paolo Zanardi. Um, I'm going to tell you briefly what holonomic computation is and why we want to combine it with error correction. Uh, then I will briefly review uh, the basic operations that we have to be able to implement in order to claim that the scheme is fault tolerant. Uh, then I will present the scheme itself and describe uh, how we implement those operations. And finally, I will discuss its properties and uh, touch upon a few uh, questions that re this research opens for future investigation. Um, holonomic computation is a purely geometric method of computation uh, which uses gener generalizations of the Berry phase. In this method, logical uh, states are encoded in the degenerate eigenspace of a Hamiltonian, and this Hamiltonian uh, is varied adiabatically along a looping parameter space. Um, uh, since the evolution is adiabatic, this, um, the, the logical states do not leave the same space, but they uh, effectively undergo a unitary transformation inside, which is of purely geometric nature. Um, um, let's imagine that we have a family of Hamiltonians uh, uh, dependent on some parameter, lambda, in a, uh, in a manifold, uh, and that it is isodegenerate. There, is, there are no splittings or crossings of the energy levels. If the parameters are slow, uh, slowly varied with time, such a Hamiltonian will give rise to an adiabatic evolution where each uh, eigenspace evolves decoupled from, from the others. So the net result will be a unitary evolution of this form uh, where we have a dynamical phase for each block and uh, a unitary trans transformation inside each eigenspace which is given by the following expression. Uh, it is a path-ordered exponent of, a, of the adiabatic connection, which can be uh, a diadiabatic connection, which uh, is expressed by the following ansatz. Here, lambda mu denote local co coordinates in the manifold, and n alpha and n beta denote different uh, some bases in, uh, in the nth eigenspace. Uh, at the instantaneous eigenspace at given time lambda. So when we complete the loop uh, in parameter space, uh, what we obtain is a geometrically invariant object called the holonomy. This is this unitary transformation. And it was proposed by uh, Zanardi and Rossetti that uh, this method can be used to implement universal computation as long as the dimension of the manifold is sufficiently large. Um, besides being interesting from a mathematical point of view, this method uh, has attracted a significant attention because uh, it is expected that it is robust against certain variations in the control parameters. And this is due to the fact that um, the transformation effectively uh, depends on the area enclosed in parameter space by the loop. And all transformations which preserve this area uh, also preserve the, the operation. Uh, you can also notice that um, the transformation does not depend on the trace with which, uh, 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 of the speed with which the, uh, the loop is traversed, as long as the adiabatic condition is satisfied. Um, why do we want to combine this uh, approach with error correction? Uh, well, any method of computation needs some sort of fault tolerance if it is to be scalable. Um, Zanardi and Lidar have shown uh, that how we can combine this method with the coherence free subspaces, which is a very important step towards uh, combining this approach with methods for protection against the coherence. But as we know, um, not all types of errors can be corrected by the coherence free subspaces. Uh, and in addition, there are also errors which result from our imprecision. While this uh, approach is inherently robust against certain types of errors, it also has an inherent error, which is due to the fact that we rely on the adiabatic approximation. So uh, in any realistic uh, computer where the gating times are finite, these errors are also going to accumulate even, uh, even in a DFS, and uh, we need uh, some fault tolerant procedure to make this uh, approach scalable. Um, we can also put forward an argument why uh, error correction might need uh, holonomic computation. And the motivation for this was given in a paper by Alitsky, Lidar, and Zanardi, uh, where they argued that uh, uh, some standard assumption for fault tolerant computation may be internal, 
inconsistent with, uh, with the rigorous derivation of the Markovian uh, approximation. Uh, in their paper, they suggested that uh, adiabatic uh, methods, uh, and in particular holonomic computation, uh, may be uh, a, a way around this, uh, since it is uh, compatible with the weak coupling linear derivation of the Markovian approximation. And finally, we hope that uh, uh, we might be able to uh, gain benefits brought from the inherent robustness of this approach, hence uh, protection from the coherence. Uh, so, just very quickly, um, it was shown by Garazman how um, fault tolerant computation can be implemented on any stabilizer code. Uh, so, this universal construction can be roughly uh, separated in a few, uh, into a few uh, types of operations that we need to be able to implement. And uh, these are transversal unitary operations, which we can divide into single qubit and transversal synods, for example. And uh, we also may want to be able to use some uh, specific, special ancillary states, like the, the sketch state proposed by Shore. Um, with which we can measure the stabilizer generators and other observables. And uh, so the method is, uh, the preparation of this is not fault tolerant, but there is a way to verify it. And um, we couple it transversely to logical operations. So we have shown how all these operations can be implemented with our economic scheme. In addition, of course, we assume that we are able to measure the computation of basic single qubits. Um, I'm going to show you only uh, how we implement transversal unitary operations, and since the preparation of the CAT state and its use is very similar. So the idea is the following. Uh, let's imagine that we're given an N13 code. Uh, uh, we're going to use as a starting uh, Hamiltonian uh, some element of the stabilizer. Uh, so. Uh, if we want to implement a single qubit operation on, say, the first qubit, without loss of generality, we will, we will take some, um, some element which acts non-trivial on that qubit, and we will assume that it has this form up to some transformation on the first qubit. So since this is going to play the role of a Hamiltonian, we would like it to have the smallest weight possible. So as we know, for example, in the short code, it is possible to choose a stabilizer element with two, uh, with weights two. So here the G tilde, which is just some tensor product of Pauli matrices acting on the rest of the qubits, is going to be just one Z, say, on the neighboring qubit. I just want to mention that for, in the case of subsystem codes, we, we can also choose a, a Hamiltonian, which acts on the noisy subsystem, on the gauge subsystem, and uh, as a starting point. So it doesn't have to belong to the stabilizer. Um, uh, so the, the idea works uh, based on the following nice observation. If we vary the uh, each of the eigenspaces of this Hamiltonian uh, are going to undergo the following uh, geometric transformation. It is going to be of this type, so it is going to be local on that qubit. Uh, of course, the overall transformation is not local because uh, there is a relative dynamical phase uh, accumulating between the, between the two subspaces, but we will see that it is irrelevant. So based on this idea, um, we have found some uh, points in parameter space such that when we uh, interpolate the Hamiltonian between these, we can form various uh, loops which are sufficient to generate any kind of uh, single qubit uh, transformation. Uh, and just to describe it briefly, uh, we're going to interpolate between uh, Z, so we can imagine a straight line interpolation. So this factor here is going to interpolate between the original Z operator and some other operator which is just Z but transformed with a given unitary transformation. I have defined it here, and we use it only for a few uh, values of the parameter theta. And it, may de there it also depends on the sign, plus or minus. So um, we're going to use only Hamiltonians of this type. It turns out they all have nice properties. They have the same instantaneous eigenspectrum, finite uh, energy gap. So uh, if we're in the adiabatic approximation, uh, this transformation should be uh, precise. So here is an example. If we want to implement the X gate, for example, we just interpolate between this and what I defined previously as H uh, by, by, by 2, and then we'll go to minus Z. Uh, th this is not a complete loop, as you can see, uh, but by uh, applying several times, we finally, when we implement uh, an incoherent operation, we complete the loop. Uh, here is also an example for the Z gate. 
The control node is also implemented in a similar manner. Again, this, uh, uh, we are going to use the Hamiltonian, uh, which, uh, which this time is going to couple qubits in different blocks, and it is going to look this uh, in the something like this. So first we apply, uh, I have described here, uh, exact procedure for control node. It, it involves single qubit operations of the above type. And also the, the operation which really couples the qubits is of the following type. So here C just denotes the control qubit. Again, as you see, this G remains invariant. So this is in the code word. This part here is in the code word of the target qubit. Uh, so all that changes really is uh, this factor which acts on the two qubits which we couple. Um, so the properties of the scheme. I, I would like to um, say now why the scheme is fault tolerant. Um, it turns out it is first by construction fault tolerant in if we never leave, uh, in, it is transversal by construction in each of the eigenspaces. But of course, an error can happen, which can cause transition between eigenspaces or some superposition between uh, uh, states uh, of states in the different eigenspaces or some transformations inside these spaces. Uh, it turns out, actually, that um, the, 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 these kinds of operations, in some sense, commute with the geometric operations, so they are irrelevant. For example, if our state becomes a superposition between the ground and the excited uh, space, it is going to accumulate some relative phase, but this uh, dynamical phase. But this phase is irrelevant since, at the end, we are going to project uh, when we measure the syndromes, either on the excited or the ground space, and so we're going to correct for this error. So as long as just a single qubit error occurs, it is not going to propagate. Um, uh, just an interesting fact is, uh, in the case of subsystem codes, and I have considered in particular the Bacon Shore codes, uh, the dynamical error is, uh, is uh, accumulated inside the noisy subsystem at all times. So we apply originally Hamiltonian, which acts not trivially only on the noisy subsystem, and then we start changing this Hamiltonian in a way that the instantaneous, the, the instantaneous subsystem representation changes, but effectively the noisy subsystem undergoes a geometric transformation. Um, I would also like to point out that we see there are calls for which uh, we, we can do this with Hamiltonians of weights 2 or 3 for the case of uh, 2 qubit transformations, we need a 3 qubit Hamiltonian at least. And uh, this is actually the optimal weight for, uh, um, for, any, uh, for universal computation on a system of qubits. By weight, I mean uh, the Hamiltonian acts non trivial on at least three, uh, three qubits. Um, uh, however, it is not obvious that it is not possible to implement this using three local Hamiltonians, which make up, of course, uh, more than two qubits. So this is uh, one open question that we are looking at at present. Uh, but um, what is most important to mention in light of the uh, when speaking of fault tolerance is the effect of this procedure on the threshold. Uh, so the threshold per se does not change because we uh, we um, we can conform to a, to, to a particular fault tolerant procedure. We we do not change this, and the threshold itself uh, is just the allowed error per gate. However, since gates here are slow, uh, this this decreases significantly the the, the threshold for environment errors. Uh, so I have uh, calculated. Um, uh, particular comparison, if we imagine that we implement a given gate with, uh, dynamically with a Hamiltonian of some uh, given, uh, given strength, and if we imagine that we apply this uh, adiabatically according to our scheme, it turns out that we need, uh, in order to, to fit in the threshold of 10 to the negative 4, for example, which was estimated for this uh, for the Bacon Shore code, it turns out that we need a um, time which is 65 times larger than what we would have in the dynamical case. Of course, assuming that uh, the dynamical uh, transformation is precise. Uh, so this is a really significant uh, overhead. Uh, in addition to that, uh, th there is also some effects on the parallelism, since at the lowest uh, level of concatenation, uh, we have to act to we cannot act on all possible qubits in a given code word at the same time, so, but this is just a minor factor compared to this. So overall, we get an overhead of um, a factor uh, 100. Um, and um, do we have any time left? Or?
Okay, so just uh, I would like to mention a few problems that this study has opened. As I mentioned, is it possible to implement this using two local Hamiltonians uh, in order to have this physically uh, realizable? Um, it is also interesting to know that uh, the gap that, that is uh, that separates the ground and excited space might provide some natural protection against the uh, coherence. So is it possible to exploit this to, uh, to design some more uh, efficient codes, which uh, uh, are combined, say, uh, uh, correction with protection from errors? And finally, are there physical systems where it might be useful to uh, implement this approach? As I said, there is significant uh, decrease in the threshold for the environment decoherence, but um, and there is but there is a trade-off, and it is conceivable that uh, if uh, some uh, in some systems it is much easier to isolate the system from the environment uh, rather than apply precise control. If this approach uh, by this approach we can gain precision, it might be useful to use it. So thank you for your attention. Uh, so basically, <laughs> there is um, that for single qubit operations, uh, say for the short code where we have stabilizers of weight two, uh, for single qubit operations we need to use Hamiltonians of weight two. But for if we want to apply a C naught gate, we would need a Hamiltonian of weight three. Right, but, but it's so but for the, the for Bacon code, it's not the stabilizer generators. Oh, for the sh sh for the Bacon show, yes. But again, can, the same thing can be done using the these operators that act on the uh, on the gauge. Uh, Subsystem okay. for the short code, uh, for example, yeah, is the stabilizer. Even though, even though you're doing it with things that don't forget each other. Um, no, we turn on at one moment. We turn on just one of these guys to implement a particular. Or if we're acting on a few qubits which don't overlap, so we, if the Hamiltonians don't overlap, we can apply on a few groups of qubits in the in the same code word as long as they don't overlap. So. It is not. Actually, it is not because by construction, these uh, Hamiltonians um, have a fixed gap. So even if uh, even if we concatenate the scheme, or even if that's, uh, we use larger codes, it doesn't matter because um, the, the gap comes only from this part, this factor of the Hamiltonian, which acts on a given qubit. Uh, this can be verified, and it is by construction fixed.